Okay, what up, y'all? We're back with a brand new video today. We are training Alora on uh, the brand new Quen Image 2512. It's not Quen Image Edit, but it's Quen Image, the normal one. Um, uh, we are going to use RunPod today. Uh, most people are not going to be able to train this locally. It's a pretty huge model. Um, with a 5090, you should be able to train pretty easily, uh, but you still have to do some offloading uh, to your to your RAM. So even a 4090, you might be able to get away with it if you have like 64 gigs of uh, normal RAM. Okay, so um, this is the WAP by the way. If you are not already on there, make sure uh, you subscribe. Uh, there's a free tier, there's a sub tier, and there's a tier for uh, all the courses that are going to be coming up. Um, they're not ready yet, obviously. Uh, you know, I'm pretty busy, but they are coming up. And um, yeah, I think that's going to be pretty interesting if you're just trying to learn Comfy UI and stuff like that. Should be pretty useful. Um, so this is the new Quen, uh, Quen Image 12, um, 2512. Uh, they claim it's better at human realism uh, and seems to be in the images they provided. So I guess we're going to have to find out. Um, we are going to be using um, the Ostris AI toolkit uh, that I uh, featured in two of my last videos. So if you watch the ZMish Turbo training or Flux2 training, you already pretty much know what to do. Uh, but it's essentially the same process. Um, first of all, uh, you're going to need to have a RunPod account with money in it. Um, obviously, uh, you can grab my link in the description to get five to five hundred dollars in free credits uh, if you're a new user. Um, here, uh, we're going to be using a 5090. Okay, so first of all, you need to go to the pods 5090. Uh, we change the template here. And we want the AI toolkit, toolkit, and we don't want to use this one or this one. We want to use the third one here, made by the original creator. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all you have to do. Then you deploy on demand. Uh, we don't need a specific storage or persistent storage for this because uh, the pod is made to be used with, um, you know, temporary storage. So when you have your LoRa's trained, make sure you save them to your local computer because they're not going to be saved on your run pod. Um, if we go here to the log, so it's going to download everything. Um, might take a couple of minutes um, and I'll be back when it's done, I guess. Okay, when it's fully done, you're going to see ready here. You can go to connect and use the HTTP service open it up uh, the password is password okay now we are ready to train essentially so we you can just add uh, the data set um, that's the Quen 2511 tests and I'm just gonna go find the data set to train on Okay, so we added our data set for every image. I only have one word captions. Um, then we go back to new job and we can just set up everything. So uh, the name of the Laura Quen tests 2512 trigger word. I'm not going to use that uh, flex. Uh, we're going to go to Quen image 2512. Um, we keep low VRAM on, even with a 5090, um, layer offloading, I'm going to do 20 here. So it's going to offload 20% of the model to the v to the RAM, the normal RAM and keep, uh, the rest on, um, the GPU. So should be fast enough. Um, I'm going to use a batch size of two here. The reason why is because it trains faster. Um, and I, I would rather have it train faster. So uh, here I'm doing uh, samples every uh, 100 steps and we want to keep 10 uh, epochs or 10 versions of the LoRa uh, throughout the training. Uh, here I want to go uh, to E minus four 
it's gonna train a little bit faster and I wanna cache the text embeddings. That's going to save us a little bit of memory. Uh, cache the latent and we only train at 512. The data set is already selected because it's the only one. Um, and here we can just remove all of that. Keep one and just put whatever prompt you want uh, for the test images. So here I'm gonna go, um, y'all woman uh, taking a selfie in her uh, bedroom. This is a pretty, pretty simple prompt, but um, we should be able to get a pretty good, um, you know, sample of the face with uh, this kind of prompt. And we're just gonna leave this as is. And after that, we can create the job. Let me just check that I put everything correctly. I think so. Um, so we create the job. Uh, what it's gonna do is download the models. So we press play here, or the start button. What it's gonna do is download the model uh, to the temporary storage and then start the training. Uh, obviously, uh, for every epoch, you will need to download your LoRa directly because if you don't, you're basically going to lose it um, because this is not a permanent kind of pod. It's more of a, a temporary uh, download everything and everything gets deleted when it's done. So here it's downloading the models. Um, I'm going to be back when it's done with the first simple image. Okay, so like I said earlier, um, the training started, uh, downloaded all the models, um, cached uh, the fucking, uh, cached the data set, and now we're training. So it's going at three seconds per iter iteration. Um, yeah, we're not going to be doing the, the whole uh, 3000 steps. I expect it to be done at around 600, 700 max. Um, here for the samples, this is the first image we generated. So there's no training on that image yet. Um, the further images are going to be looking more and more like um, our data set. Uh, here, this is new. They added um, a loss graph. So the, the way loss graphs work is essentially when you see um, the amount of loss going down, it means the training is uh, starting to, to be pretty much uh, done. Um, obviously, it's going to be down when you start it. So don't use that as an indicator but it's more of an indicator that um when you're around a certain amount of steps and you see the um, the loss going down uh, consistently uh usually you're pretty close to having your uh lower fully trained um and uh config file this just shows um all the settings that we uh, selected prior and yeah um you can stop the training if you need to. You can just pause it and resume it after. Um, but you need to make sure you saved your last checkpoint if you want to restart from that part. And yeah, um, I'm just going to be essentially waiting until uh, it's fully trained. And I'm going to be back, show the sample images and uh, run it in Config UI with proper prompts just to see if we get um, the results we kind of expect. And that's going to be it for the vid. So uh, I'll see you when it's done. Okay, so we are now uh, 16 minutes into the training. Um, we made uh, 375 steps around that. Uh, we're going to let it go all the way to 400, uh, maybe 500. But if we go to the samples here, so this is the one we started with, with no training whatsoever. Uh, this is uh, step 100, this is step 200, and this is step 300. And to me, this is pretty much done, right? Th this is the face I was training. So to me, like I could stop here. Um, we're still gonna go all the way to 400, maybe 500, just to see if um, we get better results, but to me that's pretty much trained 
um, we're gonna go inside Country UI and load it up and just run a couple of prompts and that's gonna be it. Okay, so we are now in Comfy UI. Uh, I already loaded up the workflow. Um, I added a couple of things just to make it work. Um, so I added Sage Attention, make it faster, and uh, a LoRa loader just to be able to load our LoRa. Um, I have my list of prompts that I always use for testing here. But yeah, um, if we go and look at the skin, um, it looks like uh, we still have the same issue that we had with the older Quan. Um, the skin looks a little bit plasticky and stuff like that. Uh, what we could do is run a Zimish Turbo Pass with the low denoising just to bring back up the detail. Uh, that's what I've been doing and it works pretty well. But when it comes to the detail on the phone and stuff like that, I think it's pretty good. Um, and yeah, so here I'm um, just gonna open that up and we'll go through the images. She kind of has the same face in every image, but I didn't really prompt for any emotions, so that's kind of the default face it goes to. But if I were to prompt for um, smiling or sad, I would expect it to be able to do it. Uh, I'll just do one test because this video is getting pretty long, but. Okay, so I ran it again with a sad face in the prompt. Uh, I think we got a sad face. Uh, if we make it, she is smiling heavily, heavily. Okay, let's just try that. Okay, that's a smile. That's a pretty, that's a pretty heavy smile. I think, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments, that's the video. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.